Hey, Trisha here from East Marsh Acres. We are in the evening. We've had a day today of 30 degree weather. And so we're trying to trying to uh, water what we planted on the weekend. So right now we got our water, which on the weekend it broke. So we're going to put it on the other part of the Uh, okay. It's probably as far as you need to go, Rolf. Are you going to do it that way? Yeah, I'll do it back this way. Okay. You make sure it gets the zucchinis that are planted there. Oh, Rawl, it's got to get the zucchinis there in the corner. So you got to go back further. What? The zucchinis, make sure it gets those. So you got to go back further. Or you can't because of the. Oh, that's better. Oh, that's not getting the beans. Is it getting the side here? No, not, it isn't. Okay. Okay, I haven't seen the uh, inside of the hoop house for a bit. Okay. You're going to go into the chickens? So we moved the chickens yesterday morning. So basically what we're doing with the chickens is just uh, I'm, I'm measuring it out even though apparently nobody else does, but uh, I'm cutting the grass uh, where the fence is going to go, and so that's why you see it quite, uh, quite short right above the fence, except for in this location right here. But everywhere else, where we put the fence, so we don't want it grounding out because it's um, the second strand is electrified, not the bottom strand. And then we put the overhead distractors for hawks and, and other predators, uh, according to the four posts. We just pull up the T posts and then replace them, so it's not a huge deal. And we got a new waterer for uh, the chickens as well, so this one's a little bit more uh, amenable to the situation so we don't have to worry about individual nipples and all that kind of stuff that uh, uh, were constantly giving us uh, headaches in terms of um, breaking and leaking and those kinds of pieces. So how many eggs pile in that one? So everybody's producing.
and we turn the boxes in the afternoon, in this case the evening, so that the, uh, the hens don't go in there uh, at night and uh, follow their nesting site. Right, so I'm just going to walk over to the high tunnel and uh, give you an update as to what those plants look like. I haven't seen them in a couple of days, so uh, I'll be interested to see how much they're growing. Um, as you can see, we've rolled up the sides of the high tunnel so that there's air that can pass in and out on both sides. And we're getting some grass in there. Going to have to do some weeding. So you see the, uh, the ventilation that's available. It's just on a hand crank there. Um, we've illustrated how we uh, set that up uh, a few weeks ago in terms of a video. All right, uh, tomatoes are looking pretty good. If you ask me, these are cucumbers in the center. And then on the outside, so on the outside row there, and on the outside row there, we've got green peppers and red peppers and all kinds of other peppers, etc. And then there's eggplant and wonderberry, etc. at the back. Um, the temperature overnight is supposed to be in the teens, so we're just going to leave it the way that it is right now. And um, so our progress, so as you can see from the previous videos, we've planted this entire uh, area. So beans and then potatoes in the next row and then um, watermelon and squash. And there are some um, sunflowers and all that kind of stuff. And then in the top of the fifth row, uh, again, we have strawberries and asparagus mixed together and we've been seeing the asparagus coming up and I don't know if you can see this one but here's an asparagus plant here and here's another one here and there's another sprout and here's another one and here's another one and here's another one here's another one and there and there, that's a little guy. And there, and there. So we've got all of the asparagus coming up, at least these, these ones here. We've got another pot of asparagus and strawberries. Strawberries are quite small. We won't be harvesting anything from them this year. And then on this bed over here, we've uh, broad forked all of them and uh, we've cleared the pathways because the chickens did a really good job. Um, here, here's a uh, hint for you uh, if anybody's doing the no-till lasagna method of putting your garden beds together do not put your chickens onto the uh, garden beds before you get them prepared because they will destroy the pathways in between. So we had to dig all of these pathways out uh, again um, after the chickens were in here because they just level it all. Don't know how they do it with their little feet. Um, and they were only on here for just over a week, but they did enough destruction to uh, get all of the materials gone. Um, so the next thing that we have to do on these beds is to, and you can see it, it's already been done in the outside row, is to put this cricket manure. So I think we've discussed it before. So there's the cricket manure there. Very, very fine particulate uh, material, very light. Um, it's not a problem at all to move it. Anyways, we'll put a little bit of that material onto every row and then we'll cover it with some topsoil. And we have compost over there uh, that's mushroom and uh, horse manure and uh, we can supplement uh, any way, anything with that material as well. Um, in here we have sand that we stored carrots in over the winter and uh, the sand um, is going to be put into the bed 
that the carrots are going to go uh, be seeded back into and uh, hopefully they'll be able to um, loosen up the soil so that we get uh, longer carrots this year than we've had before. Uh, a little bit of an update in terms of some of the berry plants that we've got. So there's one of the ones that we've planted. So this is a hardy fruit tree nursery. Uh, black current is what this is. The black current bush. And I think this is the same. At least it looks exactly the same. Don't know where the label is. Anyways, we also have been keeping an oak tree alive. And here is our oak tree. It's uh, maybe about eight inches tall or so, and the leaves are just starting to come out on it. But uh, we were able to, to keep it surviving from last year, and it looks like it's going to be thriving again this year. Oaks are very, very slow growing, um, hence hardwood that you get out of them. Um, so it makes really dense uh, rings of cellulose inside the trunk itself. And over here is a freebie maple that we planted a while back, i.e. last year, and it is growing as well. We planted a few more maples across. Uh, they were all freebies dug, dug out of a, um, an empty lot, and that's the only one that survived. Over here on our property again, so I'm going to go across here. Our neighbor lady is actually maintaining the grass here. We would never ever do that. But where you see the orange um, stake, and there's another stake, orange stake there, there's another orange stake on the other side of the hill, um, that actually demarks the edge of our property line. Um, and uh, this one is as well. So they create a line going to the trees at the back in a straight line and she's maintaining our fruit trees for us. So we've got uh, some fruit trees here that we planted last year and they're doing quite well. So I think this is an apple of some kind and uh, it's not suffering at all. Um, and then I think this is a pear and another apple. And another pear. I think that's what the way that we did it. And this is a lilac. So we didn't get much in the way of blossoms. Very, very small blossoms. You can see that they're still there. Um, but they're not very pronounced. And there's another lilac. I think these are Chinese or Japanese lilacs or something along those lines. And then this bush. You, you can tell that they've been rescued from other places. I'll need to go in and do some pretty good uh, pruning. And I'll probably do that at the, uh, the coldest days of the winter next uh, January or February. Anyways, this is... Uh, more along the lines of a uh, forsythia. So it's got uh, little yellow flowers that come out before the actual leaves do. It's uh, it's doing okay. It's just that it's a little lopsided and it's got uh, lots of branches on it that need a bit of pruning. So these ones that are crossing over and all that kind of stuff. So I'll thin it out a little bit. And then we have this one. And this one has basically died. It's just got a little bit of growth there. Um, on the bottom there's growth, uh, at the top there isn't. So I'll have to uh, thin out the top and uh, give it a bit of a 
haircut so that it can get uh, going again. Um, a few more trees over here. And these are what plums, Trish? What? These are plums here. So there's a plum tree, and there's another plum tree. They have to be uh, planted in pairs, sorry, in twos, um, so that they can cross pollinate. And you'll see that this is planted in the midst of our raspberry um, patch. There's a raspberry there at my feet, and there's a bunch of raspberries in rows here, here, there and then another row at the back. And we're back to the chicken plot again. Uh, so you can see that even though there was fairly thick grass in here yesterday morning, they have done quite a good job of flattening it and starting to work in between all of the grass, etc. Looking for bugs and worms and um, well, even the grass itself, if it's, uh, if it's soft enough, they will eat that as well. Uh, they're omnivores, um, dinosaurs. They eat a little bit of, uh, meat and vegetable material and whatever they can get their hands on. Primarily, we feed them a, a, a crushed grain, um, kind of, uh, diet but they're supplementing it with all kinds of greens and whatever they can find on the ground. Right, I think that uh, does it for today, and uh, we'll keep you up to date, and we'll see you soon. bounding across the field like a, a deer. He has to work hard to get through the tall grass. Anyways, talk to you soon.